Hello everyone and welcome to another video by Centipede Geek. Today I'm going to discuss my thoughts and opinions upon the MTV television series by the name of Teen Wolf. I'm going to talk about Season 3 of the first half of Season 3, which is Episodes 1 through 12. And as you know, they're going to air the second half of Season 3 starting January 6th of 2014. And of course, I will only be talking about the first half of Season 3, you know, all the episodes that have aired so far. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to it, shall we? Pretty much what we have going on in Season 3 is, of course, our main characters of Scott McCall and Allison. And if you've seen the last season, they decided to go their separate ways. The You know, they were having too many problems, him being a werewolf, having to struggle with him being in a relationship, and, you know, his werewolf, you know, killing problems. That was just too much for them to handle. So as we know, Scott McCall and Allison Argent's character have now split up. So their relationship is kind of, you know, one of the key adjustment points for this season, you know, them having to deal with still liking and still loving each other, still having a lot of feelings and affection for each other, but not being together, but still feeling something, but they know they can't be together because of what has happened. But I'm sure somewhere along the line, they'll get back together. You can already see that. That's one of the main focuses, one of the main kind of subplots. But the main point about this, as you find out later in the season, is somebody around the town is making sacrifices. They're making these sacrifices for a certain reason. When you see the end of or oh, there's the end of part one. When you see that last, that 12th episode, you find out why. That someone is actually making sacrifices for some sort of Egyptian druid. You, you don't, we don't know who, you know, I know who it is now, of course, but at first we didn't know who the, uh, you know, the Egyptian druid was, and then as the, the episode slowly you know, unfold themselves and slowly unfold, uh, unfold our story, we slowly find out who that druid is is. And then we have, you know, of course, you know, there was only one alpha in the first two seasons. You know, we had our main alpha character in the first season. Season two, we had, you know, you know, Derek as our alpha, you know, Derek Hale as our alpha. Well, now we have several alphas that have come from different towns, and they've all come to the town that Scott McCall and, you know, Derek and Allison and Styles, all our main characters live in. We now have not only one alpha, but several alphas. So we have many alphas, then we have a druid. There's several things going on in season three, but mainly a bunch of alphas are trying to, you know, get Scott McCall to join, uh, you know, Gideon and Emery's, you know, the British actor, Gideon's character playing uh, Deucalion, you know, Deucalion is trying to recruit uh, Scott McCall to be in his pack. That's pretty much the main just of episodes 1 through 12, you know, the part 1 of the first half of season 3 of the MTV television series by the name of Teen Wolf. Now, before I actually talk about my opinions on uh, season 3, I will first talk about, uh, you know, a little quick synopsis of what I felt about seasons 1 and two. And I do own those, so I wanted to show you guys what those looked like real quick. Here is season one. This aired back in 2011, I believe. This is a great season. It consists of roughly uh, 12 or 13 episodes, I believe, about 12 episodes. It was a great season. You know, each, each season of Teen Wolf kind of has its own little concept. This one, you know, was mainly about him getting bitten, him being a werewolf, and she didn't actually find, you know, Allison Argent, he made her spoilers coming up, doesn't find out he's a werewolf it's actually to the very last episode. I love the first season. Um, you know, the, the later seasons, you know, season three, seasons two are much better, but season one is definitely a great start for the MTV television series, the name of Teen Wolf. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, season two of Teen Wolf was even better. The main point is this. Not only do we have werewolves now, but we find out later on, but we, there's actually something by the name of a li some sort of lizard reptilian creature that's going around killing people. So not so werewolves now are not our only threat. We end up finding out that, that our uh, reptilian character, he had to leave the season three, because, leave the actor did because he, I believe the actor actually moved to Italy, which, you know, he could not, he could no longer be in the series, so they had to write his character out because of the actor moving to Italy. I saw that in an interview for season three with, with that character in it. I believe his name is Jake, you know, the, the football jock kind of character. Anyways, we find out, we found out that, you know, another major, major spoiler, by the way, we found out that he was actually the lizard creature going around killing people, uh, you know, because they represent what's inside your heart. That's why he was a lizard. He's a very sly, mischievous, uh, kind of guy, so that's why he was a lizard, uh, reptilian-like creature. So that was the main focus of season two. Great season, and I love the ending. You know, I love the villain in this season. You know, uh, Allison Argent's, uh, grandpa or grandfather, I believe. I, I believe it's her grandfather. Uh, anyways, the older character, the villain in this season is just great. Walks around with a sword, just good stuff. But, uh, 
let's talk about my opinion on the first half of one, episodes 1 through 12 for season 3 of the MTV television series by the name of Teen Wolf. Overall, I loved season 3. Three and the main reason was is beforehand, you know, I really wasn't able to grow emotionally or sentimentally attached to these characters. But finally, season three, three seasons in, I finally was able to grow attached to everyone. I became fond of the characters. I didn't want the characters to die. I started to feel lots of sentimentality towards the characters, and overall, just lots of emotional value and emotional resonance in each and every one of the characters, especially, you know, Tyler Posey, you know, the young actor who plays Scott McCall. I love the way Tyler Posey plays this character, plays him in a great fashion where... Uh, anyways, I love the character of Scott McCall, a uh, great character. We have Crystal Reed playing as, you know, his love interest, Allison Argent. She is really cool. She's having to decide whether or not to be involved, if she should go ahead and be a werewolf hunter, or if she should just stay out of it in general. Of course, she ends up having to get involved because she, you know, loves or has feelings for a character of Scott McCall, played by actor Tyler Posey. Of course, we have Dylan O'Brien playing the character of Styles. He's always really funny, nice comedy relief character, but you can actually feel a lot of sentimentality towards his character, but normally he's a comedy relief. Then we have Tyler Holt, uh, I can't pronounce his last name, but Tyler uh, Holtzland playing the character of Derek Hale. I love Derek in this season. I love the the scene where we find out that what he has to do. He has to give up being an alpha. He goes from be, being having red eyes to blue eyes. He's no longer an alpha at the end of season three because he had to save his sister. I believe it was his cousin or the sister character. Anyways, he had to save a relative of his of his. But in order to do this, he had to give up being an alpha. That was a huge moment where I said, "Okay, this season has been from being awesome to even more awesome." So I really liked his character. We found out some major things about Lydia's character, played by a actress Holland Roden, Lydia Martin's character. We find out that she is, in fact, a character by the name of the Wailing Woman. We don't know what that means yet. We don't. We All we know is somehow she is able to contact act the werewolves through a, like a really, really high-pitched scream, uh, shall I say, for lack of a better word. We don't know too much about her besides she is somehow connected to the werewolves, and she has some sort of overlining story arc that we have been told hint after hint after hint, but we don't know the full story about what they call her character, the Wailing Woman. Uh, so we don't really know too much about her yet. Uh, of course, Sheriff Stalinsky. Fi or we have the we have the main sheriff character. You know the uh, Dylan O'Brien. You know Styles' father, Sheriff Stalinsky. We end up finding out that. Uh, you know, he ends up finding out that the whole werewolf story, he's always wondered why these weird things in the town happen, and finally he finds out everything that's going on. Uh, and then we have, of course, several other characters. We have. Uh, we have let's let's see what what else do we have here? Of course, we have the I forget his name, but we have the uh, veterinarian character, a uh, great actor by the way. I really like his character. He's just great. Uh, one of the best scenes with him is when we actually uh, we actually uh, it's the tattoo scene uh, where towards the very end of season three, where they end up finding out they have to you know kill themselves and bring themselves back to life, and he explains that to them, uh, and you find out that I believe his. I believe it was a sister that died, and he doesn't actually know his sister has died yet. So we have that, once again, the very big element going on. Let's talk about some of the main villains of the series. You're talking about all the main actors and actresses. Let's talk about the villains. Gideon Emery plays our, uh, you know, the British actor, plays our character, of the, one of our main werewolf alphas, by the name of Deucalion. I really liked his character. He played his character with such a such a suave manner, I guess, you know, I guess you could say for lack of a better word. And just the way he walked around with a cane and then at the end of season three, I love the way his character was written. Uh, I love the little backstory. I love how the villain from season two survived. You know, we find out that he was the one, you know, he's sitting in a wheelchair now, bleeding from his nose. He was the one who stabbed, uh, you know, who stabbed Deucalion's eyes, causing him to go blind. At the end of season three, he's no longer blind, no longer having to use that cane. I loved his character. Good stuff, so menacing, you know, such a fun character. Very over the top, but over the top in a good way. I never mind over the top stuff as long as it's done in the right manner. And I believe Deucalion's character, played by British actor Gideon Emery, I believe his character was done in a great over the top fashion. When he's first introduced, when he says, you know, I am the apex predator of apex predators, the alpha of alphas, I am the demon wolf, that first quote he says, uh, I love that quote, with sunglasses. Uh, crack. It's a great over-the-top scene that I really felt worked. 
and overall just benefited the overall quality of the series. Then we have our girl actress. Sorry, her name escapes me. She ends, be, she ends up being the one that Derek Hale dates, and you know she ends up becoming the Egyptian druid character that was in fact killing people all along across the town. I also loved her character. She was menacing, she was creepy, she was scary. I mean, I didn't get scared by the scenes, of course, but I really liked her character. She had that nice, eerie, scary, and overall just creepy feeling in general. Uh, that was, She was just a great character. And at times, you know, she wanted to help them, but she still wanted to gain power. I love the fact how she's having to gather healers and guardians and teachers and, you know, parents, you know, the five, the five uh, sorts or types of, uh, you know, patterns of people in order to gather power from the, I believe it was called the Necromod or the Necrotod Tree. Uh, so now that we've talked about the actors and actresses and overall characters I like, let's talk about a little about the storyline. So I love the story of Teen Wolf. In the first season, we had overall just our werewolves. Second season, we had the whole Lizum, the reptilian. Why, you know, why did Jake's character turn into a reptile? I believe that's the character's name. Uh, you know, why did that football jaw guy turn into the reptile? Well, the main thing, thing in season three is the necrotod or necro, however you say that. The, you know, the you know the sacrificing people people underneath that tree. So I loved overall just the concepts that season that, you know, it's not just werewolves biting people. It's an interesting take. It's a nice twist. It's a nice, you know, unique, and I guess, you know, for lack of a better word, shall I say, an interesting story concept and premise and setting that they always they come up with. The series is written by a guy by the name of Jeff Davis. Now, he doesn't write every episode, but Jeff Davis is the one who overall, you know, produced and created the series. And he, Jeff Davis is also the one who writes most of the episodes. And he has a great writing formula that really stands out in, in both seasons one, two, and especially in season three of the MTV television series by the name of Teen wolf i really like the way he writes his characters makes you feel for them i love the concept of you know the, the overall story patterns but one of the best things about teen wolf story aside acting aside characters aside is the overall style of the series the feel of the series the tone and the vibe that it gives now what do i mean by that might be a little confusing the way i worded that what i mean is that the action scenes in team wolf they're downright phenomenal the slow motion sequences them doing backflips you know clawing at each other the way they turn into the team wolf or you know and the way they turn into the overall the werewolf characters in general there's so much style in the action sequences that you can't just help but like it. Yeah, they're over the top, but like I said earlier, they oh, they benefit the series by being over the top. As the seasons have went on, the action scenes have got more loose, you know, more fluid, more lucid, and overall just more luxurious in general. And I love the action scenes. This gives the series a nice overall style and fluidity, uh, and overall just fun and great and entertaining to watch in general and i just love the action scenes and that's pretty much my opinions on season three of the mtv television series with the name of team wolf great season i can't wait to see where they're going to go with it you know it ends with you know the druid being the druid being killed off and then all of a sudden our villain from season one that was died off and then resurrected to help our character seems like he's a villain again so i'm not for sure how they're going to play his character out but he says you know i have always been the alpha and he yells in a great manner i love that scene by the way it seems like his character is now going to be our villain and i'm not for sure how duke kalian's character is going to play out now i'm, I'm sure he's still going to try to get scott mccall to be in his pack but overall a great season and that'll be our pickup point for the next uh few episodes so season three episode 13 titled Anchor, once again, episode 13 titled Anchor, will air next year, January 6th of 2014. Make sure to, make sure to stay tuned for that second half of season 3. Once again, thanks for watching the video by Cinep Geek for my season 3, episodes 1 through 12 review of the MTV television series, the name of Team Wolf. Once again, thanks for watching the video by Cinep Geek. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to that page below, and I'll see you guys later with more videos by Cinep Geek.